Are you tired of hosting the same old golf outing? Are you looking for something different and unique? Do you need to raise a lot of money for your organization? Well, you've come to the right place. Hello, everyone. My name is Phil M. Wardino, and this is another GTA free webinar. For over 30 years, we've had the opportunity to work with thousands of tournament planners around the world. We have one simple mission, and that is to help you produce the best golf tournament possible. So this seminar, we're going to do something a little bit unique. Albert Einstein said once, imagination is more important than knowledge. So our, today we're going to give you a little bit of both, a little bit of imagination and a lot of, a lot of knowledge. So stay tuned with us. Our topic today is very different. It's not your typical golf tournament. For some of you, it's going to be new, unique. For some of those who tried this before, we're going to give you some new ideas. So our topic today is how to host a golf-a-thon or a golf marathon. And we're going to cover several topics. We're going to cover, one, what is a golf-a-thon? What is a golf marathon? What's the difference? We're going to talk a little bit about how they work, how they operate. What are you supposed to do to make it happen? We're going to talk about how to find a golf course and how to work with it and get the best price possible. And we're also going to talk about how to raise big money. I like to start these with a little bit of a trivia. So we got a couple of questions for you. I want you to pay attention closely because we're going to give you the answers during the seminar. But our trivia questions are this. What has been the most successful golf-a-thon on record and how much money did it raise? Two, what was the most money raised by one individual golfer? Number three, how many holes were played by one individual in one day. So I want you to think about those questions, listen closely, we're gonna give you the answers at the end. Plus we're gonna give you a free manual if you answer those questions properly. So let's get started. What is a golf-a-thon and what is a golf marathon? And what's the difference? A golf-a-thon is a fundraising event where golfers raise pledges per hole and play as many holes as possible in one day. A golf marathon is almost identical, same concept, a fundraising golf event where golfers raise pledges per hole and play a set amount of holes in that one day. Typically it's 100. What's the difference? Not a whole lot. They're pretty much the same. It's just semantics. Basically that you can use either name to be successful. So you're probably asking, well, how in the world can this be done? Now, let me just share with you some of the few uh, stats and success stories that has been happening over the years. The most successful golf athon on record raised $325,000 in one day. That was in Atlanta, Georgia. The most amount of money raised by one individual was $64,000 in Massachusetts. The most holes played in one day by one individual was 387. Most holes played by one ball, 98 holes. Uh, best score for 100 holes was 25 under. That's pretty good. Uh, oldest male golfer for 100 holes was 80 years old. Oldest woman golfer was 72. Most lost golf balls in one day was 60. I wouldn't want to admit that. Most holes in one day, uh, most hole in ones in one day were two. Most holes played by a blind golfer were 54 holes. The hottest day on record of a golf a was 117. The youngest golfer ever in a golf a was eight. Uh, the unique, most different kind of pledge was Basically, six cents, a little bit more than that. Uh, the smallest town to host the golf a was Lafayette, Alabama, 3,100 population. Youngest golfer with the most pledges, 14 years old, 200 pledges, 37, 12. That's how much they raised. Currently, there's about 600 events happening every year around the country, and the average income or net is about $45,000. An event in Las Vegas with only 18 golfers, and they were very successful. They raised $56,000. So bottom line is, no excuses. You can do, If they could do it, you can do it. So how does it work? How does a golf-a-thon work? 
Well, a golfathon is produced by basically recruiting 40 golfers who go out and raise pledges. Uh, ideally, uh, their goal is going to be $25 per hole, and they will attempt to play 20, uh, 100 holes of golf in one day. Now, uh, if this one golfer raises uh, basically $25 per hole and plays 100 holes of golf in that one day, they're going to raise individually $2,500. And if you have 40 golfers doing it that day, uh, you're going to raise over $100,000. And that's the secret. That's the key. What are the benefits of this type of event? Well, I like them for a lot of reasons. Number one, it's a simple process. There's not as many moving parts as a regular golf tournament. Instead of 144 golfers, you only need to get 40 golfers. And they get to play for free. They just have to go out and get pledges. It's a proven process. It's happened over and over again for years, over 35 years, uh, golf athons and golf marathons have existed. It's unique. It's different. Right now, currently, there's over a half a million shotgun scrambles uh, throughout the country, but only a handful of golf athons or golf marathons. So it is unique. It's, it is different. Uh, and it's a shorter process. You know, the regular golf tournament, we encourage at least six months. But this could probably take two or three months if you uh, have the golfers together. And bottom line is it raises major funds. The normal golf tournament scramble in the United States only raises five to 8000 The average golf a fund will raise 45000 So it's a proven pro uh, concept, and it's worked over the years, and it's simple. So that's why I like it. So the next question is, how is it? What's the format? How is it being done? Now, there's a traditional way, and then there's a lot of alternative ways. The traditional way is 100 holes of golf in one day, played by as many golfers as you can recruit, ideally 40. That's the traditional way on a regular golf course. Uh, but there's no reason that you can't do it other ways. For example, um, you could have a 50-hole event. Instead of a 100-hole event, you could do a 50-hole event, a little bit easier for some of the golfers. You could do a, a daytime event uh, from sunup to sundown, typical 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. is fine. You could do a half-day event from 6 a.m. to noon or from noon till 6 p.m. or till the sun goes down. I've seen some people play some light in the light and some in the dark. Uh, they make glowing golf balls so that you can play uh, some holes in the dark. I've seen it where it's been done 24 hours uh, all around the clock. Golfers are playing and, and, and uh, hitting that ball. I don't know how they last. Sometimes they have substitutes. It can be an individual play or it can be a team effort. I've seen where you have two or three golfers, sometimes four, who kind of tag team. And maybe the first golfer plays 25, another his team member comes in and plays the next 25. That could be an option for them. Uh, and then I've also seen it where you can play one, two, or three balls per hole. That speeds things up a bit. Um, I imagine that's how the guy got to 387 holes in one day. He's playing several balls per hole. It can be a multi-group event. You know, typical scenario is it's one organization using the golf course for the whole day. Uh, but you could also have multiple groups, maybe two or three organizations that team up and get, uh, you know, 10, 15 golfers each. That's a possibility. Multi-course event. You could have the same organization doing it across town on different golf courses. And then you could also make it a multi-day event where it's happening several days in a row. So that those are the different formats. None are right or wrong. The traditional is, though, one day, 40 golfers, 100 holes. So that's the traditional. One of the first things you're going to need is a golf course, obviously, and that obviously very, very important. So I'm going to give you a couple of ideas on how to find and negotiate with, with a golf course. Number one, you need to take a look at the, the type of golf course it is. There's several types of golf course. There's municipal, there's resort, there's private, there's public, there's executive. Uh, the two that you want to look at here is either an executive golf course or a full-size golf course. An executive is about 6,000 yards, where a full-size golf course is around 7,200 yards. So it's important because uh, depending on who your golfers are, they may not be equipped to, to play the full 
size golf course. Uh, a shorter one can work. I've seen it work many times. But again, traditional shows the uh, full size golf course. Take a look at who owns the golf course. If it's a private company, uh, you're going to have better luck dealing with the owners than you would a corporate owned golf course. If it's a corporate owned, you've got to kind of go up the ladder and get approval. A lot of times they're not used to negotiating this type of uh, format. Sometimes you could use a private country club. If you know a member or have an in with the private country club, many times they'll allow uh, outside events on a Monday. They're closed for a Monday and they'll let you come in and reserve the golf course for the day. Location is important. You don't want it too far out of town, uh, maybe an hour at the most, but you want one on the outskirts of town. And the reason being is if it's in town, it's going to be a lot more uh, popular, uh, harder to get on, harder to reserve the course for the whole day. Um, you also want one that's not too difficult, one that doesn't have a lot of trees and a lot of sand and a lot of water. Golfers will go crazy with a tough golf course. Uh, it's got to be cart path uh, anywhere you go. If you do the cart path only, forget it. It's too hard, too long. Won't, you, it doesn't work. So look for a golf course that allows you to get off the golf course the whole day on every hole. Look for one with good banquet facilities. You're going to need one with it's going to hold anywhere from 50 to 60 people for that little mini banquet that you have at the end. Uh, Price-wise, your goal is to buy out the golf course. Uh, can be done. You, you negotiate with the golf course. Find out what they did last year in revenue, and that's pretty much going to be the number. I've seen it as low as 5,000. I've seen it as high as 15,000. But ideally, around 10 would be the max you'd want to pay to buy out that golf course. For the day. And then the time of the year, you kind of want to look at the shoulder season. Why? Just basically because the rates, if it's perfect weather and perfect conditions in town, you're going to get charged a lot more. But if you could look at a golf course that's uh, maybe on the outskirts of town, maybe during the shoulder season, you're going to be able to negotiate a much better deal, maybe a Monday through Thursday. Uh, you can get a free golf course. I've seen it done. Uh, again, usually if it's privately owned, you have a relationship with the owners and they believe you and believe in your cause and they want to get behind it. You know, ideally golf courses throughout the country give up their golf course one day a year for free to a worthwhile cause. So you want to look for those and they're out there. Uh, don't get your hopes up because a lot of charities have gone after them already. But at minimum, you're going to pay hopefully between five and $10,000 for a golf course. So in all tournaments, we, you know, we recommend a committee. You want a team of volunteers to put this together with you uh, to help delegate the work that's involved. So if you've watched any of our seminars, you know the committee members that you're going to need. You're going to need a chairman, someone who oversees the process. You're going to need someone to oversee sponsors, uh, kind of a sponsorship chairman or sales manager. Everyone tries to get sponsors, but this person oversees the process. You want a golfer chairman, someone who oversees all the acquiring of golfers. You want an operations chairman, someone who oversees the details and make sure everything's logistically running smoothly. Uh, you want a gift and prize chairman, someone who acquires and helps everyone get gifts and prizes. But the key difference here in this format versus many of the others is co-captain. It's essential that you have co-captains that help you recruit golfers and hold them accountable. Ideally, you want about six, six co-captains who, um, and I'll tell you why, but they're going to mainly oversee and try to recruit around six or seven golfers each and then hold them accountable. So it's important when you put your committee together, as always, is to get some type of commitment letter, a letter of, uh, that says, hey, we're in it. We're going to do this. This is our job. This is our responsibilities. And this is what we're responsible for. Very, very important. And so once you've got your committee together, the next step is going to be obviously getting golfers. So this is the key because if any event falls short, it's because of golfers. So your goal is 40. Why 40? Mainly because 40 is a good number of getting around the golf course smoothly. You don't want it being backed up. You don't want golfers hitting into each other. So around 40 is a good number. Not to say you couldn't have a little more or a little less, but 40 is a good number to shoot for. And again, if they're all uh, raising pledges and they reach their goals, you're still going to have a big event. As we mentioned, we want six co-captains 
uh, recruiting six or seven golfers each. And it all boils down to relationships. You need to find co-captains that have relationships, that know golfers. They can go out to their buddies and get them to uh, get involved. You have a training meeting, which is very important. Ideally, I like to see everyone get together uh, in person for that first meeting. You get everyone excited. They get to meet each other. They kind of see who they're in competition with when it comes to raising pledges and playing as many holes as possible. So you have one big training meeting, get them all hyped up, tell them about the cause, tell them why it's important, show them how the software program works and everything that's involved. But then you can just do Zoom meetings. And I recommend one every couple of weeks. Keep them, keep them connected. Do it in the evenings. Keep them uh, abreast of what's going on, updated on who's raising what pledges. Because you want to have like a little competition going on and so you want to give reports on a regular basis and who's, who's raising what pledges and where everyone stands so that they can kind of compete against each other. Uh, you want them to sign a waiver. A waiver is key. Uh, it says that, hey, I will not sue you if I pass out or sprain an ankle. This is very important. You want every golfer to sign that waiver. And then you also want to have these golfers sign a waiver that says a minimum raising of pledges of around $1,000. Obviously, your goal for them is $2,500, but I've seen golfers try to get away with less than 1000 and that's not acceptable. Remember, you only have 40 slots, and you have to maximize each slot uh, as much as possible. So I would say that they have to at least raise 1000 Ideally, 2500 is the minimum goal, but for some, 1000 would be good because you're going to get someone that's going to raise more than 2500 Sign a letter. Make them sign a commitment letter that if uh, they don't raise pledges, they're willing to write the check themselves. And people do this all the time. So don't be afraid to ask them to make that commitment of, uh, of getting those pledges. So recruiting golfers is important. You want the full 40. You want them motivated. You want them trained. And you want them committed to raising pledges. But also, you obviously want gifts and prizes for them. They're not going to do it. Uh, well, they will. They'll do it just because. But prizes always get them motivated, get them excited. So you're going to want a, a goodie bag. You're going to want some prizes for, you know, close to the pin, long drive. You're also going to want uh, some grand prizes for who raises the most money and uh, some prizes on who plays the, the most holes. I think the secret to success here in this format is competition. You've got the golfers competing against each other to raise the most amount of pledges. And I don't care what anybody says, we're all driven by incentives. So you really need to consider putting together an incentive program, an incentive program that says, hey, when you reach certain plateaus, when you reach certain goals, you're going to get a prize. So maybe it looks something like this on the uh, incentive program. When they reach $10 a hole, they're going to get maybe a dinner for two. Uh, when they reach $15 a hole, they might get a weekend stay at a hotel. Maybe when they reach $2,000 a hole, they get a golf bag. When they reach $2,500, they get a, uh, maybe a little mini vacation. And then I would have a grand prize really, really worth shooting for. You can go out and buy a cruise at a discount or a week vacation, something really substantial worth playing for, and then you give it to the one who raises the most money. Uh, we had one individual raised over $8,500. We ended up spend, spending 1000 on a little trip, and he was very, very happy. So an incentive program is essential in keeping these golfers encouraged, motivated, competing with others, and raising the most possible. You're always going to want sponsors. You know, you've heard me say, if you listen to any one of our seminars, that sponsors are the profit. But in this scenario, it's a little different. Sponsors pay the bills where the pledges are your profit. So you want to get some sponsors. And if you want more details on how to sell major sponsors, we have a full-blown video on the uh, YouTube channel that we call the Golf Tournament Channel. And ask me for that link, and we'll send that out to you. But basically, you want to sell sponsors to cover your expenses. So you're going to want to go to the relationships, the people that you know, the people that support your organization, and offer them a return on investment. You want to give them exposure. You want to give them signage. You want to get them on the website. You want to maybe offer them a, a whole assignment for them out to, to be there to meet other golfers, to meet other people. You can do testing for them. You can do promotions, discounts, social media, 
all types of ways to give them exposure and give them their money's worth because you want to cover their your you know your expenses with all the sponsors. So, what is the cost? You're asking, okay, Phil, sounds great. We want to raise a hundred thousand dollars, but how much is this thing going to cost us? Well, let me tell you, it shouldn't cost you anything. It should cost you zero out of pocket money. And let me show you how the expenses work. Income, ideally. Uh, it should be your sponsors. It'd be perfect if you could get about $16,000 in sponsorship. And then your pledges are going to be $100,000. So the perfect world is you're raising $116,000 uh, in revenue, income. Your expenses are going to be the golf course, which would be about $10,000. You've got food, a couple thousand. You might get some donations there. You've got gifts and prizes. You definitely want to buy some good stuff, whether the winning prizes or the goodie bags. You've got some signage whenever you have sponsors. You may want to do a hole-in-one contest for a car. That would be fun. Uh, you're going to have a maybe a website for this event. And your expenses shouldn't be more than $15,000, $16,000. If you do that and your pledges are at $100,000, you will still make that $100,000. So can be done, will be, has been done. Uh, you just got to focus on those pledges and those sponsors. Now, in any event, we recommend a, a website, a software program. Uh, we work closely with a group called Birdies Pro. The reason we like them is they have a great golf account package where it allows you to set up your own website. It allows your golfers to have their own profile. Their picture tells a little bit about them and their life story. But more importantly, a place, a portal for raising pledges. And uh, donors can go there, they can put in their credit card, and they can say, I'm donating to so-and-so, and it's a slick, streamlined little process. But this web, this uh, registration software also helps you print out reports. It helps you uh, kind of manage your events, helps you, gives your sponsors some exposure, and it's a win-win all around. So I recommend Burdens Pro, which we work very closely with. So software program, very, very important. Now, what does that day look like? What's the schedule look like? Ideally, and again, nothing set in stone, but ideally your volunteers are going to want to get there early in the morning, make sure everything's set up. You're going to have a little continental breakfast and registration around uh, 5 a.m. or basically before sunrise. And then you want to get them in their car. You want to do a shotgun start, go to their whole assignment, and get those golfers off as soon as that sun comes up around 6 a.m. Uh, now, remember, you're saying, how are they going to play 100 holes in one day? If they tee up 6 a.m. and finish at 6 p.m. and no one's in front of them, they get their very own golf cart and they hit the ball and go, they're easily going to finish 100 holes in 12 hours. If you've ever played golf by yourself in the middle of summer on an empty golf course, you easily finish 18 holes in, in about two hours or less. So you want to feed them throughout the day, maybe a box lunch around 10, maybe another one around 2, and then finish up around sunset or 6 p.m., have a little award ceremony, and then you're out of there. The award ceremony doesn't have to be fancy or over the top, but it definitely uh, is going to honor the people that did well and reach their goals. You want to really give some thank yous and some, some good foods and drinks for those folks. So that's what the typical schedule looks like. Now, we have a full-blown to-do uh, checklist in our manual, but here's just a few things that you've got to remember in action, action items. You want to put together your committee and define their responsibilities. You want to actually have a tournament name. You've got to find a golf course, pick a date, create golfer packages, sponsor packages, send out a press release, create the website and registration program, or acquire the gifts and prizes, uh, send out recruiting letters, do the training meetings, uh, order the food, create games and contests, and then after the event, you know, send out thank yous and follow up with donors and, and uh, you know, clean up after yourself and make reports on how it went and full-blown uh, checklist of activities you, you can receive in our manual. So we have all the details for you, so you won't have to uh, guess what to do. So we've been doing this for over 30 years. We've been helping charities raise thousands and thousands of dollars. Uh, the Golfathon and Golf Marathon is registered under the GTA, the Golf Tournament Association of America. So we'd love to work with you. We'd love for you to use these names and use these programs. We can help you hold your hand throughout the whole process or just give you the manual and go. So we've got three options for you. Number one is 250 per year which gives you the manual, gives you the videos, gives you 
uh, you know, all of our videos, access to them, how to sell sponsors, recruit golfers, and so forth. And you can ask us any question anytime. The key is it gives you the use of the names throughout the year. Second package is a little bit more in-depth. It's those things, use of the name, uh, the video, the manual, and the website package. Uh, if you want to use the Birdies Pro uh, website and registration software, we have that available to you, and that's $500 a year. But if you're saying, Phil, this first year or two, we really need your help. Uh, we need to you know, take some shortcuts and not uh, try to learn everything on our own. You, we can work with you one-on-one. -on -one. So you still get everything that the basic package offers, but the big difference is you get us. You get us to work with you one-on-one, -on -one, whether you want us to get on the phone and train your committee people on a Zoom call, if you want us to work with you on a weekly basis and give you some more ideas and some more tips, we can help you throughout the whole process. And that's only $1,500 a year. But I guarantee it'll be well worth it. We offer a money back guarantee that you're not only going to make you know that fee easily, but a lot more. And uh, it does have big, huge potential. So we'd love to work with you in any way, shape, or form. So how do you get started? What are the next steps? Well, one, we'd love you to partner with us. The GTA would love to, you know, work with you step by step and help you get it set up. You got to put together your committee. Make sure that uh, you've got the volunteers together. Uh, you want to make sure you have a base of golfers. Put together a big list of golfers, probably of over 100, so you can get those 40. Find a golf course, pick a date, set up the website, the registration, get a title sponsor, and you're off to the races. Very simple, easy to roll, uh, especially with our manual. Now, I promise you, before I finish, I would give you the trivia questions. If you're paying attention, you heard the answers. The most successful golf upon ever recorded, $325,000 in one day. The most uh, money raised by one individual in one day is $64,000. And then the most holes played by one person, 387. Unbelievable. So that will definitely... Um, uh, if you got those questions right, send me your answers, and we'd love to give you that manual. So let me just wrap up by saying this, gang. Golfathons and golf marathons are big money if they're done right, much bigger than your typical shotgun scramble. Uh, you must have a good cause, obviously, and I'm sure you do with a good nonprofit organization. You've got to get a good committee together, then go out and get the golfers to raise pledges, um, have a good reason for those uh, golfers to reach their goals with an incentive program. Hold them accountable. And if you do these things, I guarantee it that you will definitely uh, raise a lot of money. So I really appreciate you being here. Uh, we do webinars every week on some topic. We've got the, uh, a full library of videos on the Golf Tournament channel on YouTube. Feel free to email me anytime. Any questions, we'd love to work with you. And we promise you, that we will help you raise a lot of money for your organization. So thanks for tuning in. Good luck with your event. Keep us posted. Let us know how you do. Take care. Have a great weekend.